Here's a quick example of a harmonic motion modeling problem. Very quick and very uh, very simple version of this kind of thing. Um, I want to mention that you really should um, read the the pages in the text that I suggested because um, I'm not going to probably do an independent lecture on this so much. We're just going to kind of dive in. It's not it, a lot of this stuff is not anything incredibly new because we've we've touched a little bit on applications before and here we're getting serious about them. But um, I just want to do a really quick example. Suppose I have maybe like a, it's a, a little mark marked point on like a piano string and it's vibrating back and forth because somebody struck that key on the piano that makes that string go. And the claim is that a good model for that is simple harmonic motion, a sine or cosine function. So the position as a function of time, well, let's say y, is going to be some either sine something times t. And I'm going to put a question mark here for a second. Or um, y of t equals cosine something times t. Now, here's a confusing issue about the book. Um, it's not totally their fault, but they just they do change the letters around almost as much as I do. Um, and here in this section, they're using omega. Now, we've seen that letter before. We've seen that as the angular frequency of a rotating object, and it's not at all coincidental that they're putting it in as the coefficient in front of a t in harmonic motion, because in fact, they are exactly the same. If this is something going around a circle, and I look at the y-coordinate or the x-coordinate, this is exactly the same omega. It's that angular frequency. So that's why they're using the omega here. They used k before. I often use b in front of, like in front of an x, and so it can get a little confusing. There's a good reason why they're using omega. It's a special letter that indicates um, the angular frequency. Now, we don't want to confuse that with the ordinary frequency. That's in cycles per second, or the fancy name for that is hertz. And that, they often use the Greek letter nu, which looks like a V, or F is a perfectly good letter to use, and I usually probably use F. Okay. So, here's the problem. Um, we're making, we've got this piano string, and what we know is that the amplitude of the motion, yeah, the amplitude of the motion is three millimeters. Now let's say, let's make it more fun, 3.2 millimeters. And the frequency, the ordinary frequency, in terms of cycles per second, how many periods per second it does, is, let's say, F equals 660 hertz. And we want to write down an equation, or a function, really, that models the motion. Okay. It's not really hard. Oh, and one other thing is let's assume, let's start the stopwatch. In other words, we get, we're going to set t equals 0, which we usually get to set. That's usually a choice we do. It's not imposed by nature, usually. Um, when the displacement, a reasonable choice, there's two reasonable choices. It's when the displacement is at its maximum or when it's zero. And I'm going to choose where it's in displacement is at maximum. So we want to have a function that when t equals zero, it's at its high side. That's going to mean we're going to use a cosine. Okay, so that already tells us why it's going to be a cosine omega t. And all we have to figure out is the a and the omega. Well, the a is easy. That's the amplitude. There's no calculation required there. The omega is not too hard because we still have our usual formula. P equals 2 pi over whatever's in front of the variable here, k, omega, b, whatever, and that's now called omega. Oh, wait, but what about f? The relationship between f and p, that's something we just barely got to touch on in class. If something is happening 660 times per second, then what, how, many what, how long does it take for one of those things to happen? 1 660th of a second. So let's look at that. We know that f is 660 per second. 
And so the time for one cycle, so the period, is just 1 over 660 seconds. So in other words, the universal relationship is P is 1 over F, and F is 1 over P. They're just reciprocal of each other. Very, very simple. And so we have P is equal to 1 over 660. And that is equal to 2 pi over omega. And so I can solve for that. I can solve for omega. Omega, I just cross multiply. Omega is 2 pi oops, times 660 or 1320 pi. Now, do I want the pi in there? It's kind of a matter of taste. What are we going to do with it? I'll leave the pi in there for now. And so our final answer is going to be y equals 3.2 cosine 1320 pi t. Um, notice that um, we could actually combine f equals 1 over p and p equals 2 pi over omega to get a shortcut formula. f, since it's 1 over the quantity 2 pi over omega, that just means that um, it's equal to omega over 2 pi. We just flip the 1 over a fraction. It's just the flip version of the fraction. And so it's just, oops, oh, yeah, omega over 2 pi. And similarly, uh, if you want to solve for omega, omega equals 2 pi times the frequency. They're very, they communicate almost exactly the same information. It's just that omega is 2 pi times bigger. Basically, what's going on is that omega is basically, although it's not obviously, in these things there's not obviously any circle involved, but there's implicitly a circle whenever you have sine or cosine. It's basically in radians per second. Whereas um, F is basically in revolutions, full cycles per second. And that's the familiar conversion that one revolution gives you two pi radians. Okay.